everyone. Today I'm going to go over a type of problem that you typically see in the first chapter of an introductory financial accounting course. Um, this involves different types of business transactions that affect the overall accounting equation because if you know the accounting equation, your assets always have to equal your liabilities plus equity. So what effect do different transactions like depositing cash or paying bills what type of um, effect does that have on the overall accounting equation? So that's what this type of problem is going to cover so that you can see how um, and get the big picture effect of how the accounting equation is affected by each of these individual transactions. So I've assembled a problem that typically covers most things that you'll see. This is a corporate financial accounting course. So you'll want to pay attention to whichever textbook your professor is using. Um, I'm using the 16th edition of the Corporate Financial Accounting by Warren that is published by Cengage. So if you like to, if you use that textbook, if not, most of these will be similar to what you use. Just make sure to pay attention to what uh, particular textbook your professor is using. So let's go ahead and cover this problem. So on September 1st, Oscar Meyer established Dog Corp. Oscar completed the following transactions during the month of September. So we're gonna take a look at how each of these individual transactions affects our overall accounting equation. So I set up an Excel spreadsheet um, to my left, and then I have the problem on the right. I'll be flipping back and forth just because my screen's not quite big enough to, to house both of these, but um, you'll get the overall effect. I also have the running balances going on here after each transaction, and then I'm keeping track of are my assets equaling my liabilities plus equity? So it's a good way to do a check figure just in case I input something incorrectly. Also, since this is the first chapter of an accounting course, um, anytime I enter a negative number in here, you'll see it will be in parentheses. So in accounting, we typically use parentheses to denote negative numbers, just so y'all um, don't get confused as I'm going through anything. So let's go ahead and go through these transactions. So my first one is A, opened a business bank account with a deposit of 55,000 in exchange for common stock. So you wanna see how this affects these individual accounts. So the first thing you wanna do when you're looking at these accounts is anytime um, we have a business transaction, there's going to be at least two accounts affected. So we have to identify which accounts are being affected in this one. So we deposited 55,000 in exchange for common stock. So from the business's standpoint, they got 55,000 in cash. So I wanna go ahead and add 55,000 in here. And then the business owner received common stock. So we're adding the common stock to the books of this particular company. So we wanna add 55,000 in common stock because it shows the owner's investment value in this particular company. So we've got two different accounts here and we can see how it's been affected. All right. All right, my next one is part B. I purchased supplies on account of 4750. So the two particular accounts that are being affected here is supplies. Supplies is an asset account. It is not an expense account until it actually gets used. And so the supplies are sitting in your storeroom. That is a value to that particular company. So that is considered an asset. So they bought supplies on account. So we're gonna go ahead and affect our supplies over here of 4750. Anytime it says you're buying something on account, that means you owe something to somebody else. So that company owes money to that particular supplier. So that is considered an accounts payable. An accounts payable is a type of a liability account because it's something that is owed to somebody else. So they got something in return. So that increases the amount that you have to pay somebody else. So we're gonna increase our liability account by 4750. And as you can see, as I'm going along, my assets are equaling my liabilities plus equity. So right now I have two asset accounts open here and I have a liability account plus an equity account. It's kind of my common stocks a little off to the, <laughs> the left there, but it is a stockholder's equity account. We only have one liability account in this particular problem. Okay, so part C, paid creditor on account of $3,800. So the only creditor I have right now is that accounts payable for those supplies. So I paid my creditor, which means I'm paying out cash. So my cash is going to go down by the $3,800 that I paid out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in here. 
I have also reduced my liability because I no longer owe that money to that particular supplier. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce my liability account by $3,800. And so as you can see, my balances are getting updated here. I only owe that creditor after my payment $950 remaining. So as you can see, keeping the balances going as the month is going along, as you're doing particular transactions, you can keep track of how much you owe or who's, if somebody owes you money. So it's a good way to keep things going as you're going along throughout the month. And since I'm doing this particular um, summing down here, I can see that my assets are still equaling my liabilities plus equity, so I can make sure that I'm not making a mistake as I go along. Because if you wait until the end of the month to add all of your transactions up, and your assets are not equaling your liabilities plus equity, then you have to go back through every single transaction you did that month to figure out where you went wrong. So keeping a balance as you're going along, as you're doing these transactions, especially as a student, as you're getting used to these different types of transactions, it's a good way to, to check, to make sure you're doing everything correctly. That way you don't have a whole month's worth of data to go back through at the end to figure out where you went wrong. So it's a little tip um, just to keep track of things as you're going along. All right, in part D, we earn sales commissions receiving cash of 72,800. So they are selling something. So that's their, their, the way they're earning revenue. So our revenue increases our stockholders equity account overall. So anything that is increasing in value is increasing uh, revenue affects our stockholders equity as an increase expenses will decrease because that's money going out versus money coming in. So we earn sales commissions. So that is one of our accounts that's being affected in part D. So our sales commissions are going up by 72,800 and our cash is also going up by 72,800. So we're earning some money there. All right, so as I can see, I'm still balancing here, so I'm good. So I'm gonna go on to part E. They paid rent on office and equipment for the month of $6,500. So that is cash going out. If it doesn't say you paid it on account, you can assume it's always a cash transaction. So the words you have to focus on are on account. If you don't see that, you paid it in cash. So in this one, our cash is going to go down by $6,500. So we have to figure out what other type of account could possibly fit rent on office and equipment for the month. These particular accounts that we have to work with here, which you would see in a chart of accounts, um, we're gonna use our rent expense here. So our rent expense is gonna affect our overall accounting equation in a negative way by $6,500. All right, so it's gonna go down because that is an expense, that is money going out. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and reduce our cash by the $6,500. All right, go on to part F, we paid dividends. Dividends are money we're paying out to our stockholders. So that is cash going out. You can think of it like an expense account. It is money being um, going out, it is considered what we call a contra equity account. So it affects the equity account in the opposite way of a normal equity account, which would increase it's beyond the scope right now in chapter one, so I'm not gonna try to confuse you too much. Just, just think of it like an expense account, so it behaves that way. Um, so that will affect, how much was it? Pay dividends of 5,000. So we're gonna go to our dividends account. We're gonna decrease it by 5,000. Oops, not 500, 5,000. And cash is gonna go out by 5,000. That is cash being paid out to your stockholders. That's what a dividend is. So it's their share in the company's profits. All right, in part G, paid automobile expenses for the month of 3,100 and miscellaneous expenses of 2,200. So those are two expense accounts. So I'm gonna see what we have as far as here. So we have an auto expense account and we have a miscellaneous expense account. So there's at least two accounts being affected in every transaction, but possibly more, but there's always going to be at least two. In this particular case, there's three accounts be being affected. So we paid automobile expenses and miscellaneous expenses. That's two of the accounts, but we also paid that with cash. 
So we have to affect our cash account because we didn't pay it, you know, with just anything. We paid it with cash here. Um, so go ahead and put the miscellaneous expense in here. That was 2200 So that was part G. So I'm going to subtract. Oops. And then we also paid auto expenses of the month of 3100 All right, so if you want to go over here in the cash, I'm going to sum these up. 3100 plus my 2200 so I get the total amount of cash and it's affecting our cash it's by subtracting it because we're paying out expenses so it's going to end up being a negative fifty three hundred dollars so thirty one hundred plus twenty two hundred is fifty three hundred dollars that's the amount of cash that it's reducing so it has the overall effect on our assets by subtracting it because we no longer have that cash on hand all right, part H, they paid office salaries of 7250. Office salaries will be a an expense account. And it didn't say we paid it on account or anything, so we're going to assume we paid it with cash. So we're going to go to our salaries expense and put that we paid out 7250. And then we're going to reduce our cash by 7250. All right. So I haven't checked in on this in a while but I'm still equaling here, so, so far, so good. It doesn't mean you've gotten everything correct, but it does mean you haven't made a, a, like a transposition error where you're flipping around entries left off a of zero, as you can see I almost did earlier when I did 500 instead of 5,000. So simple errors like that is what this is there to catch. And, and honestly, a majority of the errors that happen for students early on in accounting tends to be those type of errors. All right, in part I, Determine the cost of supplies on hand was $37.50. So at the end of the month, they did a count of all of their supplies. Right now it says we have $4,750 of supplies in the closet, essentially, or in the storeroom. But we went in and we counted. We've used some of those supplies on hand, and we can tell that we used $1,000 worth of those supplies. So we don't want to sit $4,750 of supplies in our asset section on our balance sheet because that's not the amount that we have on hand anymore. So we counted it and we noticed that we only have $3,750 worth of supplies on hand. So we need to go ahead and reduce our supplies account by the $1,000 that we have used this month. So we can show that we've used that. Anytime you're using up your assets, that's an expense. So I'm going to convert the amount from an asset over to supplies expense now. So that's when you use the supplies expense, when you've used up some of your supplies. So I want to go ahead and reduce it by $1,000. So you can see after I do that, the amount of supplies showing in the asset section on the balance sheet is now the correct amount that we have on hand of $3,750. And then I'm going to convert it to an expense because now we can convert it as an expense which shows up on the income statement. So supplies expense is going to go up by $1,000. It affects our accounting equation in the stockholder's equity by making it go down by $1,000. All right, so at the end, you can see all of the balances in each particular account. All of these balances are going to either get put on the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of stockholders' equity. So look up how to prepare those. Once you get done with all of your business transactions, you can now prepare those financial statements. And you can see that I'm balancing here, so I have a good start in preparing those financial statements. If you didn't go that extra step to make sure your assets equal your liabilities plus your equity account, you would be starting off in the wrong direction, essentially, because if you're not balancing at this stage, your financial statements are not gonna come out correct. So you get started on a good foot that will make sure that your financial statements get prepared correctly, so follow the steps um, in your textbook about how to prepare the financial statements once you get done with all of your business transactions. Okay, so that concludes the video for um, a basic introductory chapter in your introductory financial accounting course. And I hope you all enjoy going through these different transactions and have fun um, 
working through them so that you can get started on the right foot in your particular accounting course. Good luck, everyone.